We are continuing this week with the Brown and Sharp series, blindly trying to figure out how these machines work. Using some references, I do have some old reference books. Last week, I went live on YouTube. We had a belt issue, but we figured it out, kind of. The last detail was, do we need a belt tensioner? The flat belt system isn't a great system. This belt sometimes gets a little loose. So, the masterminds decided that a belt tensioner is the right way to figure this out. So I'm on it. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a little tensioner for this. Starts with a little design. This here bracket will line up with existing bolts on the machine and serve as a platform for our tensioner. I have already designed them. We're gonna walk over to the plasma cutter. I accidentally left the water on the table. I'm not supposed to do that. It's, it's ready to go though, so we're just gonna get to cutting. part design. The bracket is mounted to the machine and the swing arm can be adjusted for various tension. My design includes a bend. Mildly concerned that I will not be able to bend this metal. It's quarter inch. It's it's, it's pretty uh, thick. Well, we're going to give it a shot though. We're going to try to bend it in the in the press. I've got the bracket portion done. I gotta start to think about the roller itself. Weld together a shaft on the end of this. Some sort of spinning roller will push on the belt. I'm gonna be honest, my plan in my mind only got about this far. I haven't really considered. Big, something like this. I'm not an expert in cutting plastics. Heat is your enemy. Cutting slow might be a good idea. Fast and it gets a little melty and it just grabs onto that drill bit. about done with this. I'm gonna press the bearings in. This is ending up, this is ending up to be a very big lathe day. The axle is getting machined so we could thread it with a die on one side and press it into the swing arm with the other. Drilled this and reamed it, oversized by three thousandths. So that we're gonna get a nice press fit, and marry these two together.
I gave it a weld and ground it down. I don't know if I actually needed to weld this because I pressed it in really good. The amount of force that's on here isn't, isn't a lot. This might have been a little bit overkill, but I, I don't know, I already did it. I grind it down. They say a grinder and paint make me the welder I ain't. Grinder. Everything's done. The last thing to do is to put it on the old Betsy. delay us no further let's turn this on and see if it works or throws the belt <sighs> all right it's not enough but I'm not doing all that work I'm not discouraged I'm not discouraged I'm just surprised it didn't work the first time why would it ever work the first time I'm a little surprised this was a good plan we're gonna get it do the L bracket again Scooting that over another inch. Thing, thing's actually moving now. Still singing. Okay, yeah, the machine's on. It's like a transmission in a truck. That was a lot of work, but very much worth it. For this machine was just not running right. It's had this issue for a long time, but I feel like we really made some progress. We're really ready to go. Thanks for joining me on restoring these beautiful machines. Coming up will be the actual running of these machines. The OG is already making pieces. Well, the, the, the prototypes until I refine the adjustments, but the 2G is up next and we're gonna make our sprocket hubs with it. And I am so glad, because I'm so sick of making them on the lathe. Guys, this is Pete from Second Stroke Mopeds saying, don't forget about mopeds. Join me while we create these beautiful motos. That's what this is all for. If you are a new viewer, we are we are building up the factory with time period correct pieces. Tools that were made back in the day that made mopeds. We're using them still to make our, our updated versions, which are, the Moto Ray electric moped. Don't forget about mopeds. We'll see you next week.